This final step will take a little longer. I've made one change to the cards section. I have it where if we call the matched value, card x will equal negative 50. That's going to take it completely off the screen. As you can see, I've been testing as I go. I strongly recommend using print lines to test the values as you go along. In the memory start function, I've added a few things to the top. We have where I can check the face value, and that's an array of two, and it's going to keep track of the card up, which is an array of two. And I'm doing that because when you play memory, you have two cards up and it needs to check them. Let's take a quick look at how this is going to look when we're done. If I click on two, it compares them. You can see I'm testing values down here again. I created a flip command so that it'll flip the cards back over. Ideally, I'd put it on a timer. I was having a little trouble getting that to work. So it's working more like if you were manually playing cards. Ace and two, four and three, ace and two. Obviously, I need more work on my memory. Once they have both been clicked, they're gone, they're off the screen. Now, you could cause problems by clicking on them, but nothing happens. Two and three, two and two, four and four, and three and three, and you win. Obviously, this isn't that hard with only eight cards. So I have loaded a PDF file of the complete program into Canvas. Your job is to finish the program and make it have eight cards that it's so a total of 16. Um, so let's take a look at this. So we've added the P image flip. You can create your own or I'll put it up in Canvas. I've created a P font my font because I had to have a font for you win. And I had to have um, something to tell if the cards have been flipped or not and it counts 0, 1, 2 when it hits 2. We trigger comparing things and we reset it back to zero and we have my integer for win which is a counter when it equals four everything's been matched and you've won the game you'll need to change the win one for when you make it work with 16 cards I've added count nope count was already there size 500 I've added the create font my font for the um, winning message and I've added the image load image flip dot PNG and again I will load that into canvas. We haven't changed anything to filling our arrays except we did add this. This was put in here if a card is clicked you can't click it again. And the reason I do that is so that somebody doesn't click on the same card twice and trigger it to check against itself. And then I have called shuffle, which we did last time, and shuffle the cards. So we've got my draw statement, which I've added quite a few things to. I've added the text font, my font. This is for when we display you win at the end. Set it to black. Um, I'm redrawing the background so that it's because otherwise when I removed the cards they appeared to still be there so you definitely need to redraw your background. You can pick a different color if you'd like but if you don't redraw the background um, it won't you won't know when a card has left the stage. Then I have my flip button to flip the cards back over and I have to completely reset the board if the flip button is clicked and this is why I remove the cards by setting the X variable to negative because they'll flip back over so you see the back of the cards when I go through this. So if I click on the flip button it will loop through all of the cards, call face down, so that click back to false and flipped back to zero and that's just in case if you change your mind and you want to reset mid stride while you're playing we have flip set back to zero so it doesn't mess with it. Um, if win equals equals four, text you win appears on the stage. So in the mouse clicked area, this is where we made the most changes. We're checking, as we did before, to see if a specific card has been clicked. 
We also are checking to make sure that clicked I equals equals false. This is what's preventing them from clicking it twice. So I have the display front. We set clicked to true. This combination keeps it from being clicked twice. And we set card up equal to flipped. So our first card up in our two card array is set to whatever I is when we click it. If flipped equals equals two, because I'm increasing it right here, that means that we have something in the zero and something in the one spot, we will then check to see if they are matching. And I was testing this as I went. So again, when you're done and you hand it in, you should either comment out your print lines or delete them. But I want I leave them here because I want you to see that I'm constantly testing everything. This is the best way I have to troubleshoot is to see what my values are. Then we just see if the cards match. If the face value card up zero and face value card up one have the same value, <coughs> then we call the matched function to take them off the screen and we add one to the win. So I will put the flip image and the PDF of both completed files in Canvas. Your job is to create this game and then you're going to expand it so it has eight cards that can be matched, eight matched pairs for a total of 16 cards. You should be able to modify this and have it do that. And then you should start working on your final project. And you'll have until the end of the semester to do that. And you're supposed to create your own card game. So this will be the last specific lecture for the semester and the last homework assignment other than the final project. Any other lectures I do will be individual. If you get stuck working with your code, make sure to send me a zipped, zip the entire file folder that you're program is in so I have all of your images and assets and send it to me through Canvas. That way I can take a look at it and help you out where you, if you get stuck.